on the line too. So I'm going to go ahead and bring Wally Z on some any effort to save time because we are really running behind. Uh, is this the infamous Wally G? Uh, yes, it is. Hey, <laughs> Mike, how are you? Pretty good. How's it going, G.I. G. Jen? <laughs> you can call me the son. That's fine. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so, Mike, why don't you tell our listeners who you are and a little bit about your military history, and we'll get into the whole Wally G thing. Sure, sure. Uh, my name is Michael Walgrave. I'm from Wisconsin. I was deployed with the 173rd and the 1503rd HHC over in Paktika province from 2007 to 2008. Uh, I was a 11 Charlie, uh, Airborne Infantry, and now I'm back in the States. Went back to college for agribusiness, and now I'm out on the West Coast right now uh, checking it out. start with Dr. Love. He's one hell of a storyteller, oh. so I've been blessed in a life to know a lot of characters for some reason. And, <laughs> and over in Afghanistan, you kind of get bored, you know, and so you start turning the camera on to videotape you and your fellow infantry guys' uh, daily happenings while you're not staring at the desert mountains. And <laughs> it's 99% boredom and 1% mayhem. Yep, exactly, exactly. And so... So, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and Mike, I'm sorry I didn't introduce you to before, but Don is going to be my, my guest host tonight, my guest host. Nice. And um, he, he was Army, so he gets it. <laughs> a little crazy, oh, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. I can hold her whoever Charlie is. Very good. <laughs> seeing something grow feels good especially if you had a hand in it so you know the whole seeing the development from something from nothing to you know creating food that's uh i think that it hits everybody at a certain certain level you know and you know being out in the afghanistan wastelands that kind of hit home to me on a couple of different levels you know part of the deal is a scarcity of resources how that can contribute to you know extremism and it also, you know, just the fact that there is nothing going on, you know, and it, yeah, it was just a desolateness. And I didn't like the feeling I had when I was out there. It was just, wow, it's just depravity. And so when I got back to the States, I was kind of like, I th you really see a, a purpose to uh, farming and agriculture for the veteran. And as I soon discovered when I went through the Boots to Roots program, it was a two week permaculture course out in. Oregon City, Oregon in 2010, uh, we had an infantry guy from Australia, Steve Cran, he was a permaculturalist, 
and he had worked with some real, uh, really deprived, really violent, really, uh, you know, really bad neighborhoods in Australia. And through his programs, they had uh, brought together the community. They found a cohesion. They found something good that everybody could rally behind, and it was empowering. And so then I saw, you know, the, some of the veterans I was taking this class with. They had some. They they were they were marked by war and and it really seemed to help them. I mean, I mean, when you think about it, it's just the common principles: uh, fresh air, you know, healthy environment, uh, clean work environment, good work crew to work with, uh, see the development of something, and you know, this is kind of a common sense thing to me in terms of uh, you know readjusting and transitioning back from uh, chaos, I guess, and. So, in fact, uh, there was a lady that just came out with a book called Field Exercises. She uh, was actually at the class that we're taking, and the book is titled How Veterans Are Healing Themselves Through Farming and Outdoor Activities. I hope you don't mind me dropping uh, names here, but uh, Stephanie, Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie Westland Field Exercises kind of gives an idea of uh, what they've been finding around uh, North America and such in terms of uh, healing veterans through uh, farming and outdoor activities. So. about what you're doing and farming for veterans and agricultural, uh, agricultural programs? Uh, well, currently I'm just going through my website that I've kept rolling for the last 10 years, drifterradio.com, and I'm just employing basic videography and editing skills to tell a story and hopefully educate people following along. Uh, I've gone through a couple of different internships on the West Coast with agriculture, um, but I also recommend looking into... Uh, the, I don't know if you talked on the show about the Farmer Veteran Coalition. This is a pretty huge organization that works with the USDA, and they're basically empowering veterans to get their own farms. So I definitely check that out. Uh, I might have a website name for it here. FarmerVet.co, I believe, is a FarmVet.co.org. Wait, FarmVetCo.org. There you go. But uh, that would be yeah, one awesome. resource, yes. Yeah, there's a special uh, love out there. <laughs> uh, the 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 toe the toe of the devil, I think some people have called it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it, it <laughs> it's part of my marketing strategy. Apparently, people remember pain more than they re remember pleasure in a lifetime. So. <laughs> Yep, uh, I had this raft parked in the yacht yard for about seven years that was given to me, and then when I got out of the military, I uh, rounded up a couple of my buddies, and we rafted it from uh, Wisconsin down to New Orleans over 14 weeks, and I think we filmed the first movie on an iPhone, first Mississippi River trip on that. <laughs> Yeah, you get out there while you're mobile, you know, and definitely, oh yeah. So. <laughs> and, and there was an event that occurred with the palm tree. Well, what's the uh, what's the time of? Uh, it's been over seven to twelve years, I think. So I think, yeah, there was that incident of. Uh, I think that's where I recognized perhaps I should be in the military because you start hanging out with your ranger buddies from grade school and. You're, you're 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 hanging with them and things are you know even though you're crashing through three different trees and some place in Miami and keeping everything together that that's <laughs> we shouldn't talk about that on the radio by the way that's <laughs> Awesome. Dr. Love is 
all about giving away your secrets, but oh. you, yeah, you've not given away any of this. <laughs> yeah, so, we'll have a tip for that on the next show. Okay, okay. Um, there was another topic that you and I had, had chatted briefly about that is to get back to a more serious note. Uh, you had discussed or mentioned something about an interpreter that you had dealt with over in Afghanistan and that you were really interested in trying to help yes. these interpreters or these individuals that had helped our guys while they were yes. over in combat to come back or to come to the United States. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, it always occurred to me that when we decide to leave, and this is even back in you know, five, seven years ago, who's going to face the biggest uh, pinch from the locals? You know, who's going to feel it the most? And probably the people that were doing the dirty work between the U.S. forces and, you know, the the, the city officials and the, the, the old men in the community. And, you know, their face is everywhere. They're prevalent everywhere, you know. And so now this past week, I, a buddy interpreter friend calls up and he's like, hey, Whoa. Uh, Oops, sorry about that. All right, all right, it's just demons in the phone line here. Uh, so the, <laughs> he calls up and he's the looking. NSA, sorry. I, I'd recommend, yeah, you know, hey, NSA, get off our line here. You, you're not covering enough span <laughs> here. And she's trying to get a show done here. But <clears throat> uh, yeah, he basically he was looking for a letter of recommendation. And so I was looking through his files. And what it looks like is that they have a program for, the, for taking care of the problem of uh, threats to interpreters and their families. You know, they have the Afghan refugee programs. Uh, I believe it's the SIV program, if I got that right. And I was reading through his files, and essentially here he had done all this work in some of the most violent parts of Afghanistan. And they were just basically letting all the interpreters go. Like, he came in for a clarity, uh, security check or whatever, and they're like, well, you're at Bagram. Your services are no longer needed here. We need to make you leave. And they didn't even let him go back to his room to pick up his money. Basically just kicked him off the base and were like, here you go. And that was like a standard uh, mission operation, I guess. And so then he's been going through the paperwork, and he obviously fits uh, this program. And they're just trying to wrap their heads around it because there's only so many, you know, uh, visas that they can give out at a time. And so there's a backlog. And now they're trying to prove that these guys are actually doing what they say they did. And they work with the actual people they said they did. So I decided to write a, a letter of recommendation just saying, yep, I worked with this guy. He's legitimate. He'll get the job done. And, you know, come to America, you know, and check this out. This is what it's about. Uh, of course, you know. Make sure you cultivate some business ties over in Afghanistan before you leave, because that might be important for all of us in the future. You know, a little international business never made anybody sad. So, but uh, yeah, okay. I, I just uh, um, I could probably give you a little advice on that. Okay. Um, I had an interpreter over there. I was over there for seven years as a contractor, um, and my interpreter was a great guy. Fought with Pittsburgh during the war. And uh, all the interpreters are basically the Taliban know who they are, they know their families, yep. and they're just waiting for the withdrawal. Yep. Um, so it took four years, but I wound up getting him to him and his family in San Diego. Awesome. Going through the State Department. Um, it takes a lot of paperwork, a lot of patience, and the more letters of recommendation you can get from, especially... Uh, Military high-ranking officers who are holding positions, um, you know, uh, yep. stuff like that will actually help expedite it a little bit. Yep, yep. Definitely need to help support these guys. They definitely have done more for their country than probably anybody. And, you know, it's unfortunate that they can't be around to reap the, the their victories, you know, so. Well, okay. they're, they're, they're dead when we leave. Right. Exactly, and that's the other thing too. Is just yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't like to be such a doomsayer, but that's kind of what it looks. Like. Yeah. yeah. So. What were you saying, Mike? I'm sorry. No, I I totally agree. They they are not in a good position at all whatsoever, and calling them yeah, that's uh, not to mention yeah. <laughs> 
definitely definitely should hit home that for every veteran that worked with the interpreter over there. Aww. Well, we definitely let's see if we can't circle the wagons and see if we can't get some more intel put together and how we can help. Because you know we had code name Johnny Walker on uh, a couple months back, and you know there's been a couple people that I know that have helped their interpreters come back the United States after their service. So we definitely, we need to reach out and take care of these people because obviously they take care of our guys and they put themselves and their lives at risk, or their families' lives at risk yep. for, uh, for our, you know, for our guys. So that's the least that we can do is help them get to a safe place and help their families be stable and secure. So definitely something that we need to look at. Yep. There's also uh, on the uh, Department of State website, um, there's paperwork on there. I can't remember the forms off the top of my head, but you can fill those out and volunteer to sponsor that individual in the transition to the states, and that'll expedite it a little more. Cool. Cool. Do you, do you think interpreters want to do some farming? <laughs> uh, they're pretty proficient at that, especially coffee. <laughs> When are you guys coming out here? We got a planning season coming up here, so. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll circle the wagons about that too. We'll have to we'll have to do a, a doctor love intervention. So. Definitely recommend uh, it. Definitely. Yes. We want to get the we want to get the word out there again, uh, Mike, for the Wally G videos and Afghan Highway, because I mean I know that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to like get a good laugh. And you also have some really pretty cool videos about agriculture on there as well. So do you want to give another shout out to your, your Wally G YouTube sensation <laughs> channel? Oh, <laughs> uh, sure. If you're going to give me the door there, I might as well take it. Um, DrifterRadio.com. <laughs> Check out DrifterRadio.com. I'll be blogging. It's kind of a, kind of a heavy metal uh DJ spin on the world, I guess. So if you're into classical music and NPR, it might not necessarily be your thing. But uh, you know, uh, the other thing is uh, YouTube Peripheral Drifter. You know, that's the other uh, the Peripheral Drifter channel on YouTube. And you know, uh, what I haven't maybe had in quality, I've been working with your lowest common denominator cameras and phones and editing software. I do make up in quantity, so um, hopefully that doesn't. <laughs> Keep at it. Keep at it. 20,000 hours towards mastery of anything. So there you go. 10 years down yep. the road. Who knows? <laughs> yep. Yep. Read that book. Yep. Read it. <laughs> you know it well. <laughs> what is it? That, uh, in liars or something like that? I, I don't know. I, I've seen the stat in other places. And <laughs> I can't give you a reference right now. I'm just... <laughs> Well, definitely, yes, the ghost chili. Hey, you know what? You send me an address sometime. I'll send you a couple of those, and you can uh, support the cause with eating a couple of... I'm going to be out at Bang Bang Baby uh, this coming year, so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll have to enjoy some peppers awesome. at some point. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Sounds well, good. I thanks so much for coming on the show and talking about... Uh, the agriculture and, and farming aspects for veterans and, and that being an alternative therapy. I think that, that like I said, anything that you can do that brings you, like, joy or peace and you don't have to take a bunch of pills from the VA yep. is good in my book. So I really appreciate you looking into that and spreading the word. And, and we'll definitely get those links up on, on our website. And I'll help push anything that you're doing. So if you have any new projects coming up, just let me know. And we'll, we'll get you back on or we'll help promote it on social media. Awesome. I appreciate the support. Thanks for having me on the show and keep the pace out there. Oh, hey, thank you. And thank you for my freedom. 
You bet. No worries. Just live it up now. So. <laughs> Rock and roll. Sorry. Thanks, Mike. Bye, Jay.